Welcome to our introduction to Exercise 6 from Astronomers as Observers and Experimenters. I'm Jeff Wilkerson, Professor at Luther College, author of the lab book in question. So we're going to just provide a little bit of context, a little bit of introduction, some things to think about as you do this exercise. That's what we're doing with all these exercises that we're providing video introductions for. This one's about angular resolution. Angular resolution is one of the more important concepts for us to come to terms with as we work our way through an astronomy course. Uh, we measure things on the night sky. We're looking at the inside of a sphere, the celestial sphere. We've talked about that elsewhere. Uh, we can measure an object here and an object there. And, and what we've done is we've measured the angle between those two objects that you see uh, right there, that angle. Uh, so we do a lot of working with angles. And the concept of angle resolu angular resolution is the idea that that's the smallest angle you're able to measure between those two objects. There's a more technical definition for that in terms of, you know, uh, sizes of the objects, full width, half maximum, and so on. But for our purposes, we're going to say that's where the objects start to merge is at that angular resolution. So, for example, one great way to think about this is if you're looking at a car on the highway at some distance, the c headlights uh, blur together and you can't distinguish a car from a motorcycle, those two headlights, you've reached the angular resolution limit of your eye. So that's an important thing to remember is the angular resolution limit that you're measuring is going to be um, the smallest angle. A smaller angle is a better angular resolution. So this is what we're, what we're working with here, what we're talking about. And the first thing we, what we recommend you do in this exercise is measure the angular resolution limit of your eye. And we provided a chart for you to use there to try to do that. And we're going to use this idea that um, the S, the separation of two objects, S is equal to R and theta with theta in radians. We've worked with this before. Hopefully you've worked with it before, had a chance to do that. So we're using this idea that S is equal to R theta, where R is the distance from the object, S is the separation of the two objects, and theta is the angle between the two objects in radians. Um, there's a factor of 57 if you want to convert uh, radians to degrees, and I, I recommend going and, and looking at the introduction to uh, the measuring with simple tools video or, or read that um, exercise where we talk about making your plastic angle measuring strip. And so anyway, here we are uh, looking at this. If this S is two object, two sides of the same object, uh, when you get to the angular resolution limit, so let's look at it that way, theta resolution is equal to S over R where you can't distinguish S because the S is such that you can't distinguish those as two separate objects. So if S gets to be small enough, it's the smallest S you can measure at a given R gives you that theta resolution. And that's what we're going to be trying to measure in exercise six here. So um, if these two things are separate sides of the same object, that's where those two things blur together. And you, can't, you either can't see that object anymore, or if it's a bright object against a dark background like a star, then that object becomes a point-like object. You can't tell that it has any, any size to it at all. And that's the way stars are with our eyes and in most telescopes and most stars and, and almost all telescopes look like point objects uh, to us, except for the blurring of the atmosphere. More on that in another activity uh, later on, presumably. Um, but the, um, the, 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 so that's what we're talking about, crater on the moon. If this side of the, of the crater merges with this side uh, of the crater, then we can't see that crater. The crater's not bright against the background of the moon. The crater just goes away and just blurs and makes the moon look like a uniform background to us. Uh, so you'll, you'll read this in papers and, and stories about science and about telescopes and stuff. Like, hey, you could see a dime at uh, the distance uh, of Pluto or whatever. I don't know. I'm making that up. But you can. that's what they're talking about. The, dime is, the, the diameter of that dime is S, and R is the distance of whatever they say that you can see that. So it's the smallest feature that you can see on, on a surface like that. So we're going to measure this for our eye. And you've got a, an angular resolution chart given to you in the exercise. These things don't always reproduce that well. Uh, they get blurry when you reproduce them. So you want to make your own. 
I, I encourage you to make your own. Uh, so you have some lines of known se known separation. You can try different things to see which work better for you. You can have circles, right? You can have sort of bullseye shaped circles that look like this, and you know the space have the space get bigger as you move out, and to say where do you stop seeing the space in there? And when you make the transition from what you can see to what you can't see, suppose you can't see those two as separate lines, but you can see those two as separate lines, then you're going to say uh, the the S that you want to use for your resolution. I'd call it maybe halfway between that separation and this separation. Measure that separation, measure that separation, and call it halfway between. Do that with the, 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 start, the, the resolution chart that we provided for you, where you see these lines. So if you can see the separation of those lines, but you can't see the separation of these lines, these are the smallest separations that you can't see, measure that separation, measure that separation, and call S halfway between there and there, at whatever distance you paste off. Uh, I recommend paste, doing that at five different distances or so, uh, repeat your measurements. This is a hard measurement to make. And so repeat your measurements and average them out to get a resolution of your eye at different distances. I recommend in the exercise, in the activity, uh, looking to see if there are trends. Are there biases? Are there trends built into this? Can you see these um, uh, at greater distances or shorter distances? Uh, it, it, you know, if you're really, really close to this uh, sheet, uh, you can um, maybe see the defects of the line spacing a little bit more. The blurriness of the lines becomes a problem. And so you may have a different angular resolution measurement at short distances than at long distances, which is an artifact of our measuring technique, not having anything to do with the angular resolution of your eye, depending on the distance you are fr from the object that you're measuring. We wouldn't expect that to be the case. So anyway, that's I recommend going about trying some of that. Again, you can make your own chart like this. You can make a chart like this that's just a little cleaner and crisper and has known lines. You can make a chart. Sometimes you see charts that look like this where it's, uh, it's, it's like a, a portion of a circle where these lines are getting greater separation as you move out. And then you can see where does this start to blur, where you can't see it anymore, and measure the separation of those lines across there and say, ah, that's where we want to, um, we call that our S value, is the separation of the lines over there. If you want to make your own chart, maybe you have a chart. Maybe you have uh, the U.S. Air Force, I know, has produced some charts that, that we've had around here. And you can use those charts that, that are, are, are better charts for you to use. Maybe you have a chart on the wall um, that, that somebody has procured that gives you really good, clean uh, lines to measure. And so you just pace off different distances, different R values, and measure your angular resolution. Try different light levels. Uh, it's a little easier for your eye to resolve things at bright light levels than it is at low light levels. So try that and see if you see that effect. You could actually turn this whole thing into a semester-long project if you want to. And angular resolution is just that important. It really is to say, can we resolve two binary stars, for example? You see two stars in a binary system. Do we see them as separate stars or single stars? Your angular resolution determines that. Can you see features in a galaxy? Can you, if you want to look for modeling in, a, in, in, the, in the disk of a spiral galaxy, can you see the clouds? Can you see glowing clouds in the disk of a spiral galaxy? Uh, that your angular resolution determines that. There are uh, so many things that your angular resolution determines. It's such an important concept that it's worth um, spending some time and, and, re and really digging into this one a little bit and trying to do this. So measure the angular resolution of your eye, and then what we like to do is measure the angular resolution with a telescope. Uh, telescopes, that's one of the most important features of telescopes. The larger the diameter of the ocular, the larger the diameter uh, of the telescope, the better the angular resolution. So it should improve your angular resolution measurement. And uh, we make a telescope here, uh, pretty, pretty cheap, easy to make telescope, where we've got lenses that go into lens holders like this. And we'll put lenses here and here. Uh, what I happen to have in front of me here, I have to actually look, what I happen to have in front of me here um, actually, I don't have it written down. I think this is a 10 millimeter lens that I'm using for the eyepiece and a, a 30 millimeter lens that I'm using for the objective out here. And I slide these things back and forth until I get a good focus in there. Uh, this is tricky, tricky business uh, because the, you'll see it focused inside the eyepiece, uh, inside where the light's coming through. There it is. I got good crisp focus right there. Uh, so I see a magnified inverted image, uh, a circle of clean, uh, clean focus where the light's coming straight down the axis uh, through both lenses. 
Light that comes down the axis this way and misses one of the lenses but hits the other lens is blurry outside. So I see a crisply focused image inside a blurry image. Now it's also very hard to hold this thing steady enough. And when you want to do these measurements, one of the things that I like to do to do these measurements is rest this on a ledge, a windowsill, or a shoulder of a person. If you've got a, a lab partner who's willing to help you out that way, and then you have somebody else down the hall who's holding an angular resolution chart of some sort, the one we provided or one that you've made, and you start to, to try to find the angular resolution of the telescope, your hands wobble it around and it makes it very hard. So this is a really challenging measurement to make. We're gonna repeat the measurements that we did with the eye and make these measurements at say five different distances, eight different distances, make as many as we can to average together and see what the angular resolution limit of the telescope is as we average these together. Again, testing for consistency from measurement to measurement. You don't wanna to average together things that aren't the same. Um, so you want to test that consistency to make sure you're getting good measurements at different distances and, and try that. Uh, these don't have to be the same distances, probably don't want to be the same distances that you use for the eye part of the lab. You want to do these at different distances, probably longer distances, bigger R values. You should get smaller resolution values with the telescope. These lenses, they're cheap, they have defects, they're not perfect lenses, so they don't necessarily uh, work as well as we would like. Uh, very hard to hold them steady, as we talked about, so it's not going to be nearly the angular resolution improvement you might expect, uh, but it's worth giving it a try. And if you have lenses that are bigger, try it with bigger lenses. Try it with two different size lenses um, or three different size lenses or something along there um, and really, really see if you can tell the angular resolution is getting better with the telescope. So you repeat those measurements with your telescope, whatever telescope you happen to have. You know, uh, we talked about how hard it is to, to focus this thing. You want to look for the crisp focus in a circle in the middle of a fuzzy image where the light's not coming through both lenses. The way you do that in a telescope uh, to keep that, I was looking to see if I had a cheap telescope around here, and I'm sure I do someplace, but I don't see it, um, is you put a tube around it, right? That's what the telescope tube does, is it keeps stray light from coming in this direction, and you only see the light that's collimated, that comes down the axis that direction, and it's the light that you want to see. So do that with your, with your telescope, and then calculate the factor by which your angular resolution improved, or hopefully improved. If you do theta resolution of the eye divided by the resolution, this is the average of all your different measurements with the telescope, you should get a factor of improvement. I don't know, say 1.3. I'm just making a number up, 1.32. So you got 1.32 times better angular resolution with the telescope than with the eye, uh, is what that would say. Remember, a smaller number is better. And so this says the eye resolution is a bigger number than the, than the telescope. And I recommend, if you're doing this in a group, if you're doing this in a class setting, uh, write these values on the board. Maybe make a table that's uh, theta resolution of the eye. Everybody who's measured that writes it up there. Theta resolution with the telescope. Everybody who's right, right, uh, writes that up there. Then you average all those together, average all those together, and do this same calculation. Do it for your own measurements, but also do it for the measurements of the average of everybody you've got. Averaging over the resolutions uh, helps improve uh, the, the measurements to say you're making an average of a lot of different things. Now, not everybody has the same vision, so here's a case where you're not averaging everything that's exactly the same, but you're finding what would be a typical, an average resolution as measured uh, for the, the people in, in, in the setting where you are. And, and so, you, but and it should help you refine this number just a little bit. Um, if, you, if you're good with statistics and you want to use statistics, and when you do that average, right, you, the uncertainty in the resolution of the eye is just going to be the standard deviation of the mean, the standard error of that distribution. And you can go ahead and do those kinds of calculations and put a, an error bar, put an uncertainty on the resolution with the eye, a resolution with the telescope, and then an uncertainty on this ratio. But the whole main point, really what you're trying to do, is to say, do you see improved angular resolution? What is the angular resolution of the eye? That's the first thing we're trying to do. Say, can we measure an angular resolution with the eye? And what bias is in that? Uh, remember, you're probably not going to measure an angular resolution that's actually better than the angular resolution of the eye. All of the things that can cause this, causes problems, cause us to measure a worse angular resolution. Um, and so, um, I think that's true. You might think that through a little bit. Um, but to, to say, what's the angular resolution of the eye, or at least what's a limit to the angular resolution of the eye as we're measuring what that, what it's, it's at least better than this number probably. Do the same thing with the telescope and then try to find this ratio. How, can, can, we, can we detect the angular resolution getting better with 
the, the, the telescope. And that's really, as we said earlier, that is one of the most important features of a telescope. This is one of the primary reasons we use telescopes. The other would be that we, we gather light. A bigger telescope gathers more light and allows us to see fainter objects. So we want that light, bigger lens uh, or bigger mirror means more light gathering to see fainter objects, and it also means better angular resolution. And this is a chance for you to measure one of those two things. So good luck with this, everybody. Go out and measure those angular resolutions. Uh, this is a, a really important piece of astronomical observing, astronomical history, astronomical observing. Uh, when Galileo first built the telescope, this was a huge step forward. Uh, he did, you know, other people built the telescope first. When he first took the telescope and applied it to measuring on the heavens and the sky, uh, this was a very big step for us, and this is one of the reasons why. So good luck. Uh, good luck with your measuring, and we'll have more for you on another exercise.